I don't want to sit in the side stands and wear someone else's jersey on my back. I want to be on the field, even if I'm losing, at least I'm fighting for what I want. But the people who make the difference are the ones that stay in the game and have a process to get through the game. If I would have listened to everybody else, I'd be living their life. Instead, I'm living mine. I encourage you to live yours. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Dean Graziosi, and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Get in the arena. I'm more motivated today than I've ever been because now I realize I was put on this earth to share a story, to give capabilities, to make impact, so the deans that are in their 20s right now thinking, I don't think I could do this, it's the wrong time, wrong president, I missed my window. All that, all that same fear was the same fear as I had. I wasn't smart enough, I didn't have the money to start, no one gives me a chance, no one believes me, people think I'm insane, people call me dreamer, like I'm the oddball, I'm the black sheep of the family, I'm the underdog. All those feelings so many people have, and they're one shift, one little shift, not a million, away from getting course corrected. They're one shift away from being 30 or 20 years later, like I am now, and looking back, my brand's have broken a billion dollars in sales. Incredible. From that guy living in a bathroom, working out of an old beat up barn, Incredible. right? So I just hope, and I know you, universe, great people, and, and I love the inspiration, but I hope today you see, like I would love for you to say, holy sh Dean's not that smart. <laughs> yeah. Like I would love for you to say, oh my God, if Dean could do it, I could. I have a seventh grade vocabulary, even if you read my books. I write the way I talk. I mean, yeah, if you read my yes. book, you know, I write, the, it's a dialogue, it's a conversation, right? So if nothing else of that story, just knowing that you can, because a lot of times all someone needs to hear, and that's why I commended you for what you do. Sometimes Thank all you. someone needs to hear is a story. Yeah. Like, because the capabilities are out there, the personal growth is out there, the tools are out there. But if you don't have the foundation, if someone doesn't give you a chance, if someone doesn't show you can, then you start believing you can't. And then there's this certain age where you find like, oh, maybe later. And, and I'm right. gonna do another thing to hopefully disturb you. Screw later. Because the last five years went by too fast for all of you. Wait till you get older. Five years goes by in a minute. And you start saying, well, let me take this shit ass job for five years yeah. and then I'll work on me. Oh, let me, I'm gonna get married. Let me keep the job I'm talking about. Oh, oh, we got pregnant. Let me wait till the first kid's old enough. Oh, let me wait till they're in high school. Oh, let me wait till they're out of college. And all of a sudden you're 60 years old and you're like, where the hell did my life go? I want it back. You know how many people I talked to are like, I, I didn't take chances, I didn't take risks. You wanna get disturbed, picture being 90 years old and you lived someone else's life. Like, you always had this desire to do it, you're gonna be 90 going, can I get another shot? Like, I don't want that. I would much rather, did you, did you ever hear the Theodore Roosevelt quote, man in the arena? No. Oh, you gotta Google it, I, I don't have it, but basically, yeah. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it's really, it was this amazing speech he did in France and it was like, at a, at a paraphrase, you gotta find it, but basically it said, if you're not in the arena with me, if you're not playing ball, if you're not bloodied, if you're not marred, if you don't have failure, then don't dare judge me, don't dare give me a word. I refuse yeah. to listen to anybody who sits in the sidelines and points fingers at me. It said, I would much rather end my life knowing I tried valiantly and failed than to sit on the sidelines and poke fingers. But the the ultimate end would be that I went after it when everyone told me, I got goosebumps, yeah. everybody told me I couldn't uh -huh. and, I, and I figured it out along the way. Like it's such a great quote and basically what that means to me is I don't wanna sit in the si stands and wear someone else's jersey on my back. I wanna be on the field even if I'm losing, at least I'm fighting for what I want. So don't wear someone else's jersey, get in the arena and fail, like you can't win unless you're in it. Rule number two, make that move. How do we take the goals that you desire, how do we pretend it's six months from now, we're looking backwards and they have them, and attach an emotion to it, so it becomes a feeling, so it gets stuck to your subconscious, so it becomes your reality. That's like manifesting on steroids, right? But 
And here's something on the other side that most people don't do. What I'd like you to also do is I'd like you to pick the goals that are left, that you're gonna get done by the end of the year. Cause you're, if you're listening to me live as I'm doing these, this is half, more than halfway through the year. If, you, if you're pushing some off till next year, that's fine. But the ones you're gonna get done, now I want you to think about it six months from now. And you didn't achieve those goals. And you need to feel that too. Sit in it, it's six months from now and you're looking back and go, wow, another year went by, I'm still stuck in this job. Another year went by, I still didn't fix this relationship. Another year went by, I'm staying in an abusive relationship. Another year went by, I didn't spend the time to try to date and meet someone new. Another year went by, I didn't register the URL. I didn't make the phone call. I didn't dig into the course. I didn't go through the coaching. I, what will that emotion feel like? And let that bathe in that feeling. Bathe in feeling like another year's gone. Bathe in the fact of, wow, at this age, I thought I'd be further ahead. Because here's what I know. Some of you listen, make moves based on a bigger future. You're moving towards something better. You're aspirational, you're inspired. You see the bigger life, you see the bigger house, the bigger business, the bigger success, the bigger significance in the world, the bigger impact in the world. You see it, it drives you. Some of you listening right now, that scares you. If that scares you, then fine. You're a move away from person. You want to move away from a job you don't like. You want to move away from a bad relationship. You want to move away from being broke. You want to move away. That's fine. Some of you are move away people. Some of you are move towards. And sometimes when you get past the move away fear, then you can be a move towards person. That's the goal. It's like move out of fear and move towards pleasure. Listen, what drives all of us in life? Fundamentally, we all boil down to you. We want to avoid pain and we want to go towards pleasure. So if that's you, which is everybody in the world, use whatever one it takes. So again, this is your wake up call. You're, if you're listening to me, like I said, live kind of the week I'm doing them, it's more than halfway through the year. What have you accomplished? What have you let slip? What habits have you fallen back into? Where have you let your life just go on autopilot? Pick the goals you need to get done. This is your action call. Put them on a new list. Put them on a list that they're gonna get done and push, like I said, push some of them off. But the ones you push off, have an action plan for them starting next year. Get the ones done now. Remember, for future pace, six months from now, they are accomplished, attach a feeling, attach an emotion, cry if you have to, get emotional, laugh, smile, pretend you're in a situation that, that lights you up. But then also do the opposite side. Pretend it's six months from now and none of them got done. You're still in the same place. How does that feel? All I know is this is the last five years went by in a flash. How do you think the next five years are gonna feel? And if you don't make a change now, if you don't take action now, what's gonna be different in your life? This is the halfway through the year wake up call. Rule number three, power through. How long does it take for you to get over a failure? I believe that the two correlate. I believe how long it takes you to get over someone taking advantage of you, how long you hold a grudge is probably about the same amount of time it takes you when you try a business and it doesn't work out, when you try a partnership and the partner lets you down, uh, when you go after a course and the course didn't work. And then when it doesn't work out, you find reasons why it didn't, it frustrates you, it annoys you, and then you go back to the life where you're at. Now. I wasn't trying to pigeonhole everybody who's listening. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is make a point. If this is just even a fraction of you, these are the types of things, doesn't matter how good you are, there's a whole nother level. You see, I've been obsessively working on letting go of grudges and letting go of failures faster and faster every year of my entire life. Yes, I want to fail faster than anyone. If I look back in my 20s, being broke, not having money, wanting another level of life, didn't go to college, I realized one of the things that I had that most people didn't is that I could let go of a failure really fast. In fact, even beyond that, I could get so pumped up, so motivated, so inspired about a project. You ever been there, been so excited about something, wanting to do it, you're like, I'm going for this, I don't care what anybody says, and you go and you put all your enthusiasm and you stay up nights and, and you go after it, and then you try it and then it fails. They're the hardest ones to let down. It's like a relationship that you work so hard and you think the other person's on the same page as you and they're not, and all of a sudden you're let down massively. Same kind of feeling when it's a business or, or, or anything that you're working hard on or working hard for a swim meet and you, you swim all summer to lose the race, right? I think about that. I look back at my 20s and one thing I had, I wasn't smart enough to read a lot of books or go to read courses or go to events like I should have or learn from others as much as I should have. So I'm obsessed with it now. That's why I love training and sharing and delivering you anything I can to give you a heads up is 
I failed fast. I, I failed. It doesn't matter how excited I was. When I failed, I'd mope and grope and be so pissed off. But by 48 hours later, I was over it. The quicker you could focus on how to fix it, the quicker you can learn from your failure, the quicker you can anchor those emotions, those feelings, that's when knowledge becomes wisdom. I truly believe with all of me that knowledge is something we can all acquire. Information, we can all get it. There's more information out now than ever before in history. So knowledge is easy to find in today's world. Information, easy to find. Wisdom, ha, that's hard to come by because wisdom is when you take knowledge, take information, put it into play, get your ass kicked in some places, learn from your mistakes, learn from the pain, and power through. So, again, this is what I want you to think about. I don't care where you are. If, it, if you hold a grudge shorter than anybody else, go shorter. If you rebound from a failure quicker than anyone you know, rebound quicker. Successful people rebound fast. And while they're rebounding, they're actually learning from the horrible experience they had. Transform the experience. Think of failures in a way to do an experience transform, uh, tra experience transformation. I just made that up. Transform the experience from something you call a failure, something painful, into, wow, I got that one out of the way. I learned from it. I know what to do next. Rule number four, change your money mindset. A huge factor standing between you and the money you deserve are the beliefs that you have about money. So let's talk about the first belief that money is scarce. How many times have you heard that money doesn't grow on trees? It's as, it's as if we live in constant fear that somebody's taking money away. You could kill those slides now, guys. It's like it'll vanish, when the fact is, we know that money doesn't actually vanish. There's the same amount of money now as there was in all times. In fact, there's probably more money. Money doesn't go away. The fact of the matter is what happens to money is it transfers from one person to another. It transfers to the group of people that know how to make it. So the question shouldn't be, how do I protect and save? Has anybody, has, is it really possible to save your way to being rich or do you have to actually earn it? You have to earn it, but sometimes we have this ability like, like save, 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 and we're not spending the time. That's a scarcity mindset because it's not going away. The question, instead of saying, how do we save it? The question needs to be, how do I become part of the group that not, the money is not being transferred away from? How do I become part of the group that the money is being transferred to? Does that make sense? Can I get a yup? You can put this up on the screen. I've shared this a lot, but I think this statistic says it all. In 2017, there were 1,700 new millionaires, not the existing ones. There was 1,700 new millionaires created, how often? Every day in America, more than ever before in the history of America. Is this a good time to make money? Yeah. And this is a good time for money to be transferred to you. So what's up, man? It's good to see you. I, I see you all over the place. I see you hustling. I see you impacting lives, doing amazing stuff on YouTube. I want to share whatever works for, you know, your following, my following today. But I want to share, dude, your book, Built to Serve. You are built to serve. There's a difference when, you know, this is, I've been an entrepreneur for, entrepreneur for over 30 years. I've been in the self-education industry for 24. It's, can't even seem, doesn't even seem possible. But there's a lot of people that when you kind of meet your heroes or you meet the people behind the book, a habits book, a built to serve book, a time management. It's like you, beat, you meet the guy with the time management book and he's late getting on stage and stressed out of his mind in the green room. Like there's no congruency is what I wanted to say. And before we chat today, I just want to honor you and, and give you congruency. This what you wrote in this book is really who you are, man. You are built to serve. You reach out to my team all the time and want to help with YouTube and tell us what we're doing wrong. And it's not, you're not doing it because of finances. You're not doing it because you're trying to get an edge. You're doing it just because this is who you are, man. So I love seeing you out there. I love seeing you grow. I love seeing the impact you're making. Cool, man. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm still working on accepting compliments. So, um, I'll just say thank you. Oh, then I'm going to keep doing it through this entire <laughs> thing to make you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, great. Classic Dean. All right, cool. Well, you know, I also in that story, um, you know, you've been really helpful in getting that book out. I remember when I came to Puerto Rico and uh, was trying to get feedback on pre-launch, you and Brendan Burchard took time backstage while you're doing your big event. And people paid all this money to come there and you took time over lunch for 40 minutes to do a deep dive on my strategy um, and just super grateful that you guys did that. And 
you hooked me up with your warehouse and, you know, a whole bunch of things that Dean, Dean's a big reason why the book is, has, uh, uh no, got just, out just a little well. piece, man. Just what's up everybody. I see the highs. So listen, um, Appreciate everybody. I see all the cool comments coming in. So how can we deliver some value today? How, how do we help out? Besides, um, I, I do got to plug this. Like if you didn't check out uh, Evan's Built to Serve, you should check it out. Um, the truth is I'm not all the way done. I freaking love it. My biggest problem is every book I read, Evan, I listen. I, I'm, I have such a hard time reading. I still have dyslexia. It still doesn't stick. So it's taken me longer. But when I actually read a book, it sticks. So uh, highly recommend it. And uh, it's it just you. It's like it's it's having a, a 200 page conversation with you, which is which is always cool. Cool, man. Appreciate it. Well, we also I also have an audiobook version. I, I read it myself. So there's always. Oh, dude, option. please send that to me. Rule number five, change your story. Talk to me in your study about how imperfect you found a lot of, you know, successful entrepreneurs are. Like, how possible is it through taking just a series of, like you said, small pivots, small habits that could totally change the trajectory of your life? Can you talk to me about what yeah, you yeah, found yeah. in your study? Of Absolutely. So, I love to talk about what's going on right now. So, I'm here with you now. I literally was in Puerto Rico this morning for breakfast. We're in Beverly Hills right now. Yeah. I, I was there masterminding with some dear friends. We get together and we find hidden little spots all over the world and we meet a couple times a year. Yeah. I, I chartered so I could be here on time. I landed, I came here, sat down. <laughs> so if I look a little disheveled, a little out on a plane for seven and a half hours and I drove in traffic and now I'm yeah. here, right? But I was there with, some people you might know, I was there with Lewis Howes, Russell Brunson, uh, Trent Shelton, um, uh, Rachel and Dave Hollis. They, Rachel's got the hottest, her Book books right are like number one in five in the world uh, in That's Amazon overall. Yeah. She's crushing it. Um, uh, I think I said Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels. I, I, there was so many, I can't even, I, like yeah. people that you, like when you watch them on social media, right? Um, they're just doing amazing things. My buddy Brendan Bouchard, right? right? It, Tony and I, are, are, we're doing something special. I wanna tell you about that a little later. Like if you take Tony Robbins and all the people I just mentioned, mm -hmm. when you see them flying on jets, doing cool things, you're like, God, how, I could never get there. Right. But we just mastermind for three days, and when we do, we're dear friends, and we opened up. And I can't tell you who, but there's not one of them that has a story that's not like severely tragic. Mm -hmm. I mean, two people in the group talked about this weekend how they were molested when they were young. Wow. Two, three people in the group talking about how their parents stopped talking to them because they call them dreamers. Other people, their parents split and left them on grandma's doorstep. Mm -hmm like broke, no school, couldn't graduate. Like, like everybody's got the story. Right. And, and I don't say that to make what you're going through, to minimize what you're going through. It doesn't matter if you came from perfect parents and you still feel empty on the inside or you came from unbelievably horrific background. The only thing I know is there is no ingredient for success that has to do with your past. Omar, I know a little bit about your past. You struggle with a lot of things. Your past was there and it was designed for you to be the man you are today. And those that realize that, those that can say, okay, today's the shift. Today, and this is the most important part, what every single one of them had in common. Some of the top influencers in the world that I just mentioned, right? Influencers, when I say influencer, people who are really doing it, <laughs> really making an impact, doesn't, don't just have followers, right? right? Um, what they did is found a way, and this is kind of Tony Robbins 101, is they found a way to change the story. And Rachel Hollis, amazing woman, like killing it right now, an inspiration to millions of women. Her mom, her father, her, her siblings didn't believe in what she was doing. They thought she was crazy, right? right? She, she's gonna, her husband, I mean, there was a point with her husband where, and she writes about this in her book, where he didn't believe her. He's like, he thought personal development was for broken people. Yeah. And his <laughs> wife is literally going to Tony Robbins and writing books and doing, and he felt that. And there was a point in their, and they got the best relationship you've ever seen. Like, right. amazing couple. And it's, I love and it's a classic challenge that you find in the personal development world. Yeah. One, one spouse, spouse is into yeah. it, one's out. And yeah. one day, she, either, she literally said to him, you're either, on board or you're not like basically and and the good man that he is he went to Tony Robbins with her <laughs> he started doing it and now they work together managing Incredible. this but wow. like a riff and a relation like all of these things but one thing is different is they found a way to say I'm not going to fail or be held back because of these circumstances I'm going to use them as the fuel to keep me going rule number six unleash your potential in a business a job, you lose it. Right now with COVID, with all the things that went sideways, you'd be going, I lost, I lost, I lost, but what if this is the universe 
God, whatever you believe in, saying what you were doing was not meant for you. It was not allowing you to live into your full potential. You have more to give the world. If you won't do it on your own, I'm going to do it for you. You won't close that door, I'm locking it. Go find something that fills your heart. Rule number seven, discover your unique ability. When you work on the things that drive you, fuel you, that excite you, that you're good at, you find the enthusiasm, you break through. I would much rather give a mediocre, listen to this, and this is something that's factual and I've done it over and over and it always works. I would much rather give a mediocre opportunity to someone with passion who knew their unique ability and were ready to dive in than give the perfect opportunity who is to someone that's not in their unique ability. They're just trying to struggle through it. Like so many times we want to we want to get someone to work with us or for us or next to us because they're not really doing anything and we're trying to force them into doing it. You're like, God, they're not, they don't have anything going on. Why aren't they doing this? Because it, maybe it doesn't align with them. You know this. When you feel aligned with something you're doing, do you... You're unstoppable. You can break through anything. Nothing's going to stop you. So what I want to do today, before we get done, and I'm going to give you a process to look inside yourself, to find the things that you're good at, that you love to do, that also simultaneously can cut you the biggest check possible, right? That's Dan Sullivan 101. I'm going to give you my version of it, but think if you're aligned with yourself while at the same time you're doing things that can cut you a bigger check. That's when life exponentially grows. Rule number eight, let go. I'd like to talk about what you have to give up, what you have to let go of. As you take this journey to be more successful, as you gain self-education by listening to me and others that are actually playing the game at the highest level possible, as your mind grows, as you shift your thinking, you're going to have to let go of old thoughts. You're going to have to let go of beliefs that may have been your parents. You know, sometimes you're a Republican because your parents were, or you're a Democrat because they were, or you're Christian because your parents were, or you like a certain football team because your parents like that football team. Well, it's the same thing here when it comes to thinking. Love your parents, love your surroundings from when you grew up and always cherish that. But if there's another level of life that you desire and you crave, you might have to give up some of the thinking that they gave you. You might have to give up some friends. Along the journey of being an entrepreneur, I, I can remember being young and family members telling me how nuts I was and, and that I should stop being a dreamer. Family, eh, they kind of get a pass and you go through and sometimes you're close, sometimes you're not, at least in my case, and then it circles back around, but they're your family. They're there for life. But I can remember friends that would always tell me, slow down, dude, that stuff's for other people. You can't have that. And I can remember friends literally getting mad that I was going after stuff or investing in real estate or investing and in trying to get on TV when I did my first infomercial or did my first course and training on how to help people go faster and my success training. And, and I remember along the way that I would have friends ride with me to a certain level and then they couldn't handle it anymore because they didn't want to go for it or they felt inferior because, I, not that I was successful, they felt inferior, or maybe it was ego, or maybe it was envy, but they would start wanting to drag me back to them, and the truth is, I had to let them go. There was nothing I can do. Some, some stuck, I'm literally recording this right now in my house, and behind me, if you're watching video, over on the other side of the house is my dearest friend from when I was literally five, six, seven years old, we met. He's really one of the few friends that stuck the whole way. I still love the guys I grew up with, but a lot of times it just changes because I want to surround myself with people who have a bigger future mindset. They want tomorrow to be bigger than yesterday. A lot of times in life, people get stuck without even realizing. It doesn't mean they don't have huge hearts. It doesn't mean they're amazing. It doesn't mean you don't love them and will love them to the day you die to the day you die, but they have bigger past mindsets. So when you're talking about how tomorrow could be better, they're talking about back in the good old days when we had that other present, when we were back in college, back in high school, back when the economy was different, back when the Republicans ran it, back when the Democrats ran it, or whatever it is, they have a bigger past mindset and you looking at a bigger future mindset just conflicts and you have to let them go. Rule number nine, observe your thoughts. <laughs> what advice out of all you've learned, over a billion dollars, failure, mistakes, all the success books, he said, what, have you, what could you tell me it was just one thing? Which is a hard thing and I didn't think about it in advance. Of course, yeah. And I said, he said, what would it be? I said, learn to observe your thoughts quicker. I, it took me till I was in my probably 40s to really understand that your thoughts lie to you. And your thoughts will steer you down the road. Like when your thoughts, have you ever, you're listening, have you ever, 
um, like thought a girlfriend did something wrong and all of a sudden you're right. all fired up. Like how could she do this? Or a boyfriend, you're emotionally the respond. Then you get there and you find it was all BS. It didn't even happen. Right, or right. like, I can't believe my buddies went to the movie and they didn't invite me. And, and you realize they left you a voice memo. Like things yeah. can happen to fire us up that are just our perception of a situation. Right. Or insecurities that are bubbling up or whatever it is. I yeah. mean, think about when I, when I say that is like, think of thoughts, right? Two ident identical situations. There's a car accident. Two people are involved. One circumstance, someone gets out and screams their head off. How can you do this? I'm going to be late. My insurance is going to go up. What are you stupid? How can you do right. this? You like? Don't you see? Then yeah, yeah. you see? Like, are you blind? Right. Yeah. That's one. Same circumstance. Right. Someone else does it and gets out and says, "They say I'm sorry." Go, oh, no big deal. It's cars. Yeah. It's metal. We have insurance. Nobody's hurt. Who cares? Hey, can I buy you a coffee? You look a little shaken up. Yeah. Right. So when <laughs> someone says no, when right. somebody says get real or this is what actually happened, nothing is what actually happened. What happened? Is the the situ is the perception of a situation? Now I know you probably heard that a million times, but maybe this is the first time you actually think about it. Your situation right now is being held back, or being fueled simply by, by what you think you have, right? And when you change that story, you change your life. Like, and one of the ways that I think is really important is if you feel like you can't start your own company because you don't have money and you're not smart enough. Then go Google John Paul DeGiorio and look at his story. That's who started yeah. Vidal We actually Sassi. had him on the show. What's that? We actually oh, interviewed right. him on the John show. I love John Paul. Yeah. Right? Amazing. Go Google Richard Branson, Tony Robbins, me, everybody I know, everybody I was with this weekend. <laughs> None of them started with money. None right. of them were like, hey, here's 100 grand, go start your business. Or right? a blueprint on how to do right. it. Yeah. Three quarters of the people we were with this weekend didn't go to college. Like, not that you find someone who you say, I can't do it, I don't have a supportive spouse. Find someone who didn't have a supportive spouse and they did it anyway and prove that the story that your subconscious has developed to protect yourself is bullshit. Like literally when it pops up, that, that limiting belief, that doubt talk, that, that inner villain says, it's the wrong time, wrong president, wrong economy, wrong. just prove it wrong and call it a liar and start figuring a way to empower that. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is stay in the game. And Tony Robbins, I go to, I fly down to Florida. He says, come down, spend a couple days with me. I go down with his, him and his amazing wife, Sage. We're at his house and Tony looks at me and he goes, brother, all I've ta heard you talk about is what could go wrong and who you don't want to be. You can't create a bigger future, and we're going to get into that next without this one thing. I, I got to ask you this, and I remember he got like this close to my face, and he said to me, who do you want to become in your 50s? <sighs> I've heard it a million times. I've read it in books, but that, if I look at you right now, I don't care if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, who do you want to become in your next generation? Who, not what are you going to accomplish, how much money you're going to have, who do you want to become? Man, at that moment, it freaking hit me. I want to become a freaking man who admitted his mistakes and attracts the most amazing woman in his life, and I want to be a man that's obsessively in love with one woman. I want to be the father that my kids look at and go, my dad went through a tough time. Divorce was tough. Business wasn't easy. Guy, my dad lived in a trailer park when he was a kid. Didn't have an education past ninth grade. But my dad accomplished it. He's an amazing father. He's an amazing husband to his wife. He's an amazing leader. He's an amazing role model for people. Like, that's who I want to become. And when I started thinking about that, I don't, I don't know about you, man. I'm getting goosebumps right now. I started feeling empowered on who I want to become, not what I want to achieve. So for me, the momentum is starting, right? I was going down. That's why this loop, I was going down. Who do I not want to become and going down? All of a sudden, you could start spinning this momentum, right? Do you ever like go behind a boat or see somebody behind a boat on a tube when they, when they whip the boat around, that tube's like, it goes so fast. That's this. You see, the problem is so many people get to these points and the momentum going down steers them off or throws them off and then they live life flat. They live life saying, I almost made it. If that recession didn't come in 2017, I would have been fine. If COVID didn't take my legs out, I would have been fine. If my business didn't go, I would have been, if I didn't go through that divorce, I would have been fine. It's because they just bailed on one of these things. It was so painful. They didn't have a process to get through the loop. They bailed on one of them. And that's the person <coughs> you talk to in the Uber or, or, you know, great people that say, I almost made it. But, screw but. We all have that. We all have something. 
We're all different. We all have unique circumstances. But the people who make the difference are the ones that stay in the game and have a process to get through the game. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. When you watch a video and you just get motivated, the sign says you have a 35% chance of actually following through. That's not good enough, Believe Nation. We gotta take action. But when you get motivated and then you create a specific plan of action for when and how you're gonna do it, your number jumps from 35% to 91% chance of following through. And when you commit to somebody else, like posting down here in the comments below, that number jumps to 95%. I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Put it down in the comments below so you can follow through and I can celebrate you. The biggest lie we've ever been told is to work on our weaknesses. All that does is rob your confidence. There's people in this room right now that are living an okay life because you feel that you're not good enough. You're not smart enough in a certain area. You're not good at bookkeeping. You're afraid at sales. You're not that organized. Screw all that. Get amazing at what you're good at and pay someone to do the stuff you suck at. Does that sound right? But we're taught through school, we're taught through life that we have to get good at everything. It's just simply not true. Every entrepreneur I know, every successful person I know, they just found what drove them and got them excited and went for it. So I want to encourage you to, to not be fooled by that working on your weaknesses. Don't hold that back and say, well, I could if. I had all those thoughts. What, what, I mean, I wrote a book. Someone who was in special reading barely got out of high school. I wrote a book for gosh sakes. I felt so insecure in my first book, and then I give, it to my, I give it to my editor, and my editor calls me up and says, hey, I just want to tell you, this doesn't need a rewrite. Or this doesn't need an edit. It needs a whole new rewrite. This isn't a book. It's a 300-page conversation. Don't put this out there. Really, you don't want to. And I almost threw the book in the garbage because I started thinking, oh, who am I to think I could write? I'm not that smart. That's for people who go to college. All those limiting beliefs, all those negative stories. And then finally, I, I found myself saying, no, I just want to give a message to somebody. I don't think people care if it's written perfect. If it sounds like a conversation, great. Almost threw that book away. And I kid you not, I was an inch away from deleting the whole book and saying, forget about that. I'm great at real estate. I shouldn't have tried to write books. And that book, and it hit, it hit the New York Times bestseller list in 10 days, my first book. So I didn't mean to go down that path, but that's, I'm really passionate about that because if I would have listened to my guidance counselor, if I would have listened to Miss Thompson in seventh grade, if I would have listened to everybody else, I'd be living their life. Instead, I'm living mine. I encourage you to live yours. If you want 10 more amazing rules from Dean Graziosi, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. People with unsuccessful businesses also take opinions from the wrong people. They take advice from your parents, advice from your friends at a, at a picnic, advice from people who pretend they know what they're doing, their coworkers.